Good day guys, Austin here and in today's uh, guide or tutorial I'm going to show you how to set up the Nintendo Entertainment System or the NES. Okay, first off you need to have RetroArch already installed. If you haven't done that please follow the link on the screen now. That will show you how to set up RetroArch and everything that's involved with it. It's quite a good bit of information and a quite a good video. It will enable quite a lot of systems, in fact it will probably enable 90% of the systems that work in Hyperspin on your setup so make sure you've got that installed if you already have that installed my apologies let's continue okay first off take yourself over to the mega site that's in the description below once you're there click on the file download it to your desktop and you should end up with something similar to this it's a 7-zip file and in there is all the information uh, uh, all the files that is needed for this installation or the setup that I'm gonna produce for you on your hyperspin setup okay um, extract that basically what you do is you right click go over to your 7-zip or whatever extracting uh, program you've got and put extract here that should then give you a folder similar to this on your desktop okay within it I've given you everything that you need make sure you read the readme and all that kind of good stuff once you've got that go to your hyperspin setup in my case it's in my D drive, my hyperspin folder and there we go that is the root of the hyperspin folder, the one that's got hyperspin and hyperlaunch and all that kind of good stuff already installed in there okay what I need to do is copy these two folders which already exist in our hyperspin setup as you can see databases and media and I've placed everything that's done so you can basically drag and drop everything straight into your hyperspin setup so there's no messing around okay it'll probably ask me to overwrite all kinds of good stuff I know that everything well hopefully should be in the correct place we'll find out in a second of course <laughs> come on come on take forever killing me here okay replace all these files yes I do want to replace them all okay and that's it now we've given it everything that we need included in there I've given you the boxes, I've given you the carts, I've given you the bezels, I've given you the fade I've given you the themes and loads of other good stuff um, that is that up and running okay that's all the media I've done already installed into the now let's make it work okay take yourself over to Hyperlaunch HQ first of all you will note in the left hand pane you will already have Nintendo Entertainment System already enabled on Hyperlaunch however you most probably, unless you've been fiddling with it, I may have, I can't remember. <laughs> you should have, uh, it should be there, but it won't be working. If it is working, why are you watching this video? <laughs> uh, left hand pane, select Nintendo Entertainment System. Okay, let's get it set up. So, click it on there, click on the Emulators tab. As you can see in mine, for some strange reason, I've already got Hagen, or oh, Hegan, or whatever it is you pronounce it, whatever country you're from. Uh, already enabled in there. We're just gonna. If yours are most probably be blank, or you may have some information in there. If it's not working, follow my guide and let's get it working. Okay, first off, you need to tell it where your games are. So, click on the plus sign over on the right hand side. In my case, mine's in my the, the, the hyperspin drive in my ROMs folder. And where's Nintendo Entertainment System? There we go. Click OK. Obviously, yours will be different depending on well where you've installed them basically so point it to wherever it is and the default emulator in this case we're going to be showing you how to set it up with RetroArch which in my opinion is the best one for this um, okay so we told it where it is we're going to told it where it's what it wants to be using we then need to tell it whether our games are zips or unzips uh, in this case I've already put it as true which is correct in my case basically all my games are compressed or 7 zipped or rad or zipped so I'm going to enable true to tell it to decompress the game before it runs your games may not be compressed in which case you put it as false however if you run the game and it doesn't seem to be working come back here and do the opposite of what you've already got as in true or untrue or false or whatever you call it and hopefully your games would then work sometimes it can be fussy about stuff like that okay once you've got that going um, we have, well, I've given you bezels for this system. Basically, bezels are the thing that fill the black gaps at the side of the screen. Of course, if you want to, you can stretch out the screen to fill the whole screen. 
Uh, I don't like that because games tend to look a little warped in my opinion. But, you know, each to their own. In that case, um, well, let's take a look. Okay, Nintendo Entertainment System, we want to click the Settings tab and then we want to go to the Bezels tab over here. Over here, we want to tell it to use Bezels because I've supplied them for you. If you don't want to use Bezels, uh, click False and then ignore everything that I say in the next few minutes. Okay, so Bezels tab, True. Do I want it to go full screen? True. Do I want it to use backgrounds? True. And there we go. I think that should be everything set up in this instance for you to quickly enable bezels. Um, if you don't want to use bezels, of course, don't set any of these settings and set it to false. Um, fade screen. Let's have a look what's going on here. Okay, fade screen. We've already got it set up as default, so it will use fade as default if you've been following my guides. We want to tweak this because, well, basically we want it to look good. So, in my instance, I want to go to the fade screen progress here, and then want to go to the animation type. I only want it to show the image. I don't want it to show the bar because the bar shows me how long we've got to take to decompress the file because this file is only probably less than a megabyte. <laughs> it's basically going to go from naught to 100 in a second. So. What I want to do is set it so it just shows the image. I also don't want to see the progress, it's exactly the same thing really. Um, so I'll set that to false also. Now we should just see loading and it may say loading, but it won't show any, well, it'll just look a lot neater. So, you know, follow this if you want it to look good. <laughs> okay, so we've set the bezels, we've set the fade screen. I've installed the database already, we've told it what emulators to run, we've told it where the games are. So in theory now I should be able to go to games, I should be able to click the audit button. This will audit all the games that it's found in the system along with the database that I provided for you. Um, let's test it to make sure it works. Okay, when this, I'm going to play Ghostbusters 2. When it does load, I'm going to press F1. F1 will open the um, conf config menu within RetroArch, and then I'll talk to you from there because obviously, while this is going on, it's going to be quite loud. Okay, click the rocket to make it work. Loading it. Loading complete. Fade working. Thank you. And there we go. There is all our bezels enabled on the left hand side. Right hand side. Okay, press the F1, that brings up this menu. Now what I do is I want the screen to fit the bezel. So, best way to do that is, we've just pressed F1 obviously to get these settings up. We then need to use the arrow keys down to settings. All this is covered in the RetroArch setup to be honest, but I'm just going to quickly go through this again just to get it up and running on my system. Okay, up and down, that chooses whatever menus you want. Press X to select. I'm going to go down to video shader, press X again. I want to set a custom ratio, press X. Okay, now I can start moving left and right on all these basically to fill the gaps. There we go. I want it to fit the edge of the screen and then on that side I want it to fit there also. Press X again and that is that up and running. Now to save all the any settings that you want for example, I can also go into the shader, I can load the shader preset again, all this is in the RetroArch setup, so if you're stuck, if you can't remember, go back to there, um, choose whatever, basically that makes it look different inside the game, and input options, that does your control, so press X on there, and basically choose whatever inputs you want to use for, well, all the players basically. Okay, press Z. Remember, don't press escape to come out of here. You need to come back to the first option, to the first menu, should I say. Uh, click on save new config. That will save it then as well, the name of the config of core, whatever you're using. So I think it's uh, Nestopia or something it uses for the core in this case. Then you need to take yourself over to the config uh, folder within the RetroArch emulators folder. Rename that config to whatever, well, in this case, Nintendo Entertainment System. Uh, save that and then whenever it loads up it will always load this. Yes it sounds complicated but it's a one time setup. It will then do it for every other game every time you play it. There's no chance to overwrite it and you're always good for the rest of your life to play Nintendo undisturbed. Okay if you are stuck go to the RetroArch video again just to, as a quick recap that will show you all the settings I've just given you in, in fast time just then. Okay so I'm not going to save this in this instance because I'm going to tweak these later on while I'm not on the video. Okay, so I'm going to press escape 
brings me back out. Now we know the game works, now we know our bezels are working. If you don't want to use bezels again, just press uh, bezels no in the options menu and stretch it to your screen or I just have black bars, you know, whatever you want basically at the end of the day. Okay, that's that working. Now we know the game works. We've got our bezels, everything's tickety boo, fades, greens, everything's good. However, if we were to load up um, hyperspin, we'd probably run into a few errors. So let's just configure hyperspin. The way we configure hyperspin itself is through hyper HQ. So at this stage, we can minimize that. We're going to load hyper HQ. Come on. Come on. I want to flick through these. And try and smash out as many of these today as I can, giving you all the art to get you loads of systems set up. Okay, main menu, we don't need that. What we want to do is go to wheel settings at the top. We then need to choose the wheel. Obviously, we're going to choose Nintendo Entertainment System because that's what we're setting up this moment in time. Click on that. That will open this pane. You should have all these fields and none of those should be filled out unless you've been messing with it previously. If you have been messing with it previously, then just make sure as default everything is set up the way it is at this moment in time. Okay, once that's done, ROM path. You need to set that to basically where all your games are again. I know it sounds confusing because you're doing it twice. Basically, the last one was to get your games to run. In this instance, this is to make your games look good within Hyperspin. As in, find all your games. Um, okay, so, media. Um, where are my games? Where are my games? I can't remember. Oh, yeah, in my P drive. And my ROMs, Nintendo Entertainment System. Where have you gone? There you are. Click OK. OK, that now points towards wherever my ROMs are. Parameters. Uh, ignore that. Extensions. I know that they are... Well, they're compressed because I've already told it that. If you're unsure, go to the folder, have a look at the extension that's on the end of each file and make sure you put them in. When you're inputting the extensions, it's a bit weird. However, just follow whatever I'm doing. I know when I compress, so I'm going to give it all the compressed extension so I know that I'm good so in my case I'm going to put 7-zip no spaces comma okay that's how you separate each extension that you want to put in there um, so for some reason it's gone capitalized I don't want that 7-zip there we go must have had caps lock on 7-zip comma no space and then I want to put ra comma no space and then I'm going to put zip okay they're all the common ones that I most probably would have as a file type for my, because mine are all basically compressed. Yours may not be, in which case you put whatever extension there on the end. These have been covered in the other videos anyway, but just a recap anyway. Okay, so that's everything set up in here the way I want it to. I've got my extension set up and I've got my ROM path set up. Then I need to go over to my wheel and I've got box art enabled in this, so I want it so whenever I stop it, it's basically gone. I can't see the wheel anymore. I was going to see his box art and all the art that goes with it. Okay, I want to put this up to 400, because that's the way I like it personally. And uh, that can stay the way it is. I want to set it so it's not normal, I want to set it to vertical. Of course, this is you play around with this as much as you want. I'm just showing you how to do this in my case. So I want it to go vertical instead of curved. Uh, navigation, I want it to show the ROMs that I've got only and I wanted to show the wheels that I've got only the rest of them I don't need to worry about I wanted to return to the last game when I load up the system and also I want to remove all the text field info in other words I wanted to get rid of like the USA the version number and all that kind of stuff I just wanted to show the name of the game all this will come apparent when we actually load up the system okay next stage go over to video that should be working so I shouldn't need to play with that even if it's wrong just leave it unless things are wrong in that case point it to your video folder Okay, sounds. I don't like all the dodgy sounds that come with it, so I just want it to be able to click to be able to do it when I'm navigating. Okay, I've included the 360 um, the 360 info at the bottom, basically, um, like I've done in all the other videos. <laughs> okay, to enable, if you've got basically a 360 pad uh, and you're using Gucci script, uh, do what I'm doing now, okay? fed up going through this every time <laughs> 500 384 I want it to come in in a second and I want it to go out in a second I want it to do the length for three seconds and then I want it to go away for three seconds okay 
So I want that to be fade and I want that to be none. Okay, that should now all be set up. That should now save. All I need to do is click X. Now, when I load Hyperspin, I should now go to the system. Everything should be tickety boo. It, everything should be amazing on this system. The only thing that will be different is the text that describes the game in the bottom left hand corner. If it's not too loud, I'll try and say it while I'm doing it. Basically, if you want to change the text to match the system, um, follow my tips and tricks and that will explain more. Okay, let's load it up, make sure it's worked. Come on, Hyperspin. Come on. Okay, here we go. Where's uh, Nintendo? There we are. Okay, as you can see, I've given you the default, uh, sorry, the system theme. Down the bottom, you've got your Xbox controller buttons flashing up. Now, the only thing you may need to do is actually download from Hypersync the videos for the games. I think that's the only thing I haven't included. So, click into here. And there you go. I've given you the wheels, I've given you the box art, and I've given you the car. Everything's resized and placed for exactly where it's supposed to be. It looks like we've already downloaded the uh, videos for this, but if you haven't, go to your uh, Hypersync. If you're unsure how to use Hypersync, well, basically follow the video tutorial I've given for that also. <laughs> and you see at the bottom left hand side where it shows the name and the maker and the actual name of the game. If you want to change that so it looks good, follow my tips and tricks video and that will explain all and how to change that. Okay. And that's that. You've now got um, basically Nintendo Entertainment System not only working but looking good on your system. I've included all the custom wheels, the box art, the carts, the fades, the bezels, the databases, everything you need to get up and running. Okay, so that's it. Watch out for later on today, I'm going to try and release a few more of these, uh, it just depends how long it takes me to knock them out. Also, ensure you spread the word on this, uh, share these videos, if anyone's stuck, point, the video, point them towards the videos, it's helping people out basically at the end of the day. Uh, it's not that hyperspin is hard to set up, it's just that people don't know how and videos like this kind of help them out and it stops them go into these stupid knobheads who try to make a quick book out of people's misfortunes basically don't buy computers or hard drives or pre-configured hyperspin setups because they're all bullshit you can make it yourself 20 times better just by watching one of these videos trust me these guys just out there to make a quick book off your back they don't give a fuck if it doesn't work when you get it to them and they come on saying blah de blah our customer service is second to none bullshit you're a faggot who has been a video who tries to sell systems to people who are just going to give them to the kids most probably. So follow my the way I do it. At least then you know how to do it yourself. If anything does fuck up and the guy just turns his back on you, you know how to do everything. And to be honest, it looks 20 times better than the bullshit they're selling. Okay, thanks for watching. Make sure you like, share, subscribe. And I will catch you later, guys.